Hey folks, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. This video is going to be on the cylinder block, only the cylinder block part, on the KZ-1000 Police. As you can see behind me, there's a cylinder head there. There's a separate video coming out on that. I only mentioned it because I was originally going to do one big long video on both, you know, the block and the head, but it just got too large. So I broke it in half, and this is the other half, of course. I tried the best I could to do this with my editing software, but it isn't the best at this. I think some high schoolers wrote my editing software in a computer science class. I got to really upgrade that. And so, like I said, did the best I could. So if it jumps around a little bit or something seems out of place, that's the reason, but I think you'll get the gist of it. So again, we're going to take the block off the bike, throw it over on dad's old bench. We're going to stick the dial bore gauge down the side of it. Probably, maybe, most certainly get disappointed by the numbers. <laughs> then we're going to mic up the pistons and uh, maybe even get more disappointed. But who knows? You gotta watch to find out. So with that, let's get right to it, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hey folks, it's time to start filming the next uh, batteria of clips, or battery of clips, that we're gonna put into the, um, the vault and assemble another video on this police bike. Uh, and this might be a while before it comes out because I gotta get, as I mentioned the other video, I have to get some other stuff going on. So the whole objective here was to just get this in, take the top end apart, and then this is going to get pulled, pushed out into the uh, overflow area in the shed most likely and park for a while. We'll plastic up the top of the motor once the jugs are off, the cylinder block is off rather. And then, um, you know, it'll be ready for reinstallation when we get to that point. So that's what we're going to do here. I'll set you up. We'll take the cylinder block off just real quick. Shouldn't be hard at all considering this thing's already pretty loose. Um, and then usually they're not. Usually they're like cemented on. And then uh, we'll take it and set it over on the bench and we'll take a look at it and do some measuring with a bore gauge. Uh, we'll um, at least uh, take off one, if not all, of four of the pistonians. At least get an idea what the piston to uh, bore clearances are right now with the pistons that are in it. And it's going to be what it is, I'm telling you right now. I mean, I've already got a lot of money invested in this besides what I put into it originally. And... Uh, and also, you know, what I had to pay for it from the previous owner and what I just ordered online to do the top end, which I explained in the other video. So anyway, let's get with it. I'll set you up and we'll do it. I see a fat guy in the reflection. Cylinder blocks usually have pry points that are built into them, reinforced up in the front here. I don't know about in the back. I don't think so. To break them loose. Like I said, this one was coming loose already. Yeah, see, this one's loose already. Uh, usually, again, these things are just cemented on. Let's get the removable part of the tensioner out. The other part is held in down below. It's the part that rocks back and forth like on a hinge. Now you can really just take these off with the pistons in any position you want. It doesn't matter because if you have it up on, on number one and four top dead center like this, most likely it's going to stay that way. The only thing you really do have to watch out for is when you take the cylinder block up, uh, as soon as it clears the pistons, they're going to want to fall forward and smack the, um, uh, you know, the block. And you really don't want to let that do that. So I try to get it up, get it up a certain amount, and shove some towels in there. All right. You know what the biggest problem is? The studs are never straight up and down. You gotta get the studs like a contortion around to get them to even fit when you put this sucker back on. I don't think I've ever seen a base gasket on any engine. I haven't done a ton of these inline fours, I'll admit that, but if you combine all the other singles and things like that I've done over time, a base gasket that comes off that easy is always a good thing. Uh, usually, like I said, they're cemented on here. So that's a good, like I said. So we're going to um, just uh, you know, protect these little holes for the oil gallery 
and just kind of wipe it up real quick and while the uh, one and four pistons are up in the air we'll stuff a bunch of rags into the area drape over two and three to keep you know Jesus pins from springing over that way or clips in this case we'll pop out the uh, one and four pistonians and label them and then we can use them as a reference uh, when we check that bore out at least uh, for those two bores and it'll give us a good idea especially since we can stick a bore gauge down two and three and get a reference that way I have this uh, piston pin puller here, but usually I don't need it. I just use it to pull the pin out manually if it will come out because a lot of times it's just the burrs on the edge of that uh, uh, that groove where that clip sat that kind of holds it up. And you can just kind of pull it out. There we go. There's the pin. Pistonian. It sure looks good so far. We're going to do um, cylinder bore size right now, see where it's at, and uh, also any taper or anything like that. Tapering out around this. I have the standards written down, and so what we're going to do is uh, set the bore gauge up based on a micrometer over here that I've set to that number, which is uh, 2.736 Imperial. I did check the mic maybe two tenths off close enough i don't feel like adjusting it for two tenths all right so we're set to that bore diameter which is a maximum that's the limits on it so see so what we got this way well it's not too too bad that is uh plus three to, i'm sorry each one of these is a half small the small marks are a half let me let me zoom up on this so you can see you can't see what i'm doing each one of the small marks the hash marks is a half thou so right now we've got uh, one two about two and a half thou plus this would be the minus side over here this would be a plus side so it's 736 so we're set again for the maximum and right now that's not bad because we should be at 7, 36, 35, 34, about 33 and a half. All right, so let me check in a couple different spots. 33 and a half, or I should say two and a half there. That's about just under two and a half. And that is, the bottom is, I want to go above the wear line about yeah two and a half or so so we're definitely on the plus side which is good that's two just under two one and a half the uh, maximum allowed taper and run out is two thou so if we do this and we look at this again, let me back out. If we look at this again, just to have a starting point at, uh, let's say just across, and we'll turn it 90 degrees each way. We're looking at, we get a little higher up toward the top, about two and two, just under two and a half thou. Down the middle, about the same. Toward the bottom, about the same. Then we're going to turn it 90 degree. I know you can't see this, sorry. Just under two. Just under two. Just under two. So this bore is good according to the numbers. Because again, our bore inside diameter maximum. They don't give you a minimum or a range. You know, they just tell you the maximum and uh, let me double check that in the book yeah that's definitely the wear limits the only standard they give you is the um, uh, bore clearance as far as a range goes it's one uh, one in, well zero zero one seven to zero zero two seven so one in seven tenths to two and seven tenths about a half thou difference between the sides so that was well within the taper and the uh, the um, out of round spec now we just take this guy loosen up the lock and 
we can set the bore gauge to it. A 2.734. 25 and 10 would be 35, less 1 is 34. So 2.734, our bore um, ID is 2.736 uh, um, for the um, scrap, so we are within that. Not by much, but it jives with our um, thing because we saw about two thousands on there. Yeah, we're definitely on there, definitely. Well, it's close, but it's two thousands under, so hey, we'll take that, right? Now it's time to check our Pistonian. We're going to get number one, which I already have out. And the service uh, data here in this piece of crap climber says to measure it on the skirt side, uh, essentially um, 90 degrees to the uh, piston pin and about 5 mil down on the side. So we'll go about right here and we'll make up a pistonian, get a good feel. That feels good. 2.730. 25 and 5 is 30. 2.730. Our piston OD. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, I'm reading that wrong. So your piston OD minimum is 2.724. So we're quite a ways over that. They're, they give you a lot of slop in this thing. That, again, is your scrap. It doesn't tell you what this normal is. So our bore ID is 736, we're at 734, and our piston on number one, the OD is 2.7, um, basically, basically 730, and uh, 724 is a scrap, so we're six thou above the minimum. Okay, so what's the bad news? And I know you're thinking this, you're going, well, just because the numbers of the bores and the pistons are within spec, the real important thing is the piston to bore clearance, and you'd be right. And I'll tell you right now that they are way out. Number three in particular is almost six thou out, or six thou rather. So that would be just about four thousandths out, or two per side. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're not going to do anything. We're going to run these pistons with new rings just like we talked about before. I know that's not always the right way to do it, and I know some guys are going to be really, con you know, upset about that. Most likely, who's ever watching this, but you got to look at the entire big picture. All right, the bores are not in terrible shape. I'm not going to run an actual hone hone in these things. I'm going to run a ball hone, which just conditions the surface for new rings. If it takes anything out, it would be barely a half thou, if that, and that would just be surface you know, uh, varnish and so forth that's on here, all right? And since all the other numbers are good, they're within, I know the piston to bore clearance is not. But again, what we're going to do is we're going to put new standard rings in it with those pistons, with new gaskets, and we're going to run it. you got to remember that this bike's got 66,000 miles on it, and it was a police bike. So the chances are, well, not chances, but the probability is there that there could be other issues with the engine. Remember that the previous owner had told me he wanted me to look into this, um, which I never got a chance to do because it ran so crappy, um, was he said he had like a growling in second or third gear, or fourth gear, or whatever it was, and he thought, um, you know, wonder if there's any problem in the transmission, and he said he brought it to another shop, and they said, no, your sprocket is bad, the front sprocket is bad, so he had provided me one which I did change, but the, cha the sprocket I took off wasn't all that bad. Now, the chain tension was off, and maybe he was hearing that, but who knows? There could be bottom-end issues transmission-wise in this thing. So, just for shits and giggles, I took a look and said, how much would it be just to throw, you know, like one millimeter over pistons in it? Now, I can get a set of IMD pistons, which are pretty good pistons. I've used them before, that are one millimeter over. Come with the piston pins, the rings, the clips, the whole bit. It's about uh, 260 maybe with shipping, let's say 300 bucks, all right, to round it off with tax and stuff. So 300 bucks. But I'm going to have to have these bored out 
for that uh, size one millimeter over plus you know a thou or a thousandth and a half I'd say 1.5 thous because that's what I've experienced before with IMD they want a one and a half thou piston to bore clearance so I'm gonna have to pay somebody to do that um, my neighbor down the road's got a hone slash bore that could do it but um, I, that's a lot of material to take off for his machine so we'd have to send this out so basically, um, uh, you know, that would really negate any, any getting any re reasonable amount of money back on this thing to put another 800, 800 to a thousand bucks into this thing. I don't think it would necessarily be that much. Figure, um, to, uh, well, I, last time I had it done, it was about 280 um, for one millimeter over on a GPZ 750 with a shop that I've used up in Orlando. But then you had to factor in the shipping and you had to factor in some other stuff. So it was probably more about 320, 330, and that was several years ago. I'd have to think now that it's closer to four or 500 bucks. So if we put four, let's say 400 to be conservative, plus another you know, 300 and change for those pistons, now we're 700 bucks. And I, I, can't, I just can't put it into this one, especially when I don't know the status of the transmission and that, that sort of thing. So I know it's not the right way to do it, but it is the way we're going to do it. I can guarantee you there's a crap load of old bikes running around out there that run just perfectly fine with piston to bore clearances like this, all right? So we're going to run it the way it is and put it back the way it is. I wish number three wasn't so far out. The other two are, you know, if you think about it, a um, little over a thou out because uh, 2.7, uh, 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 you know, thou, 0 .0027 is just under three, and these were at four, the other ones, so it's a little bit over by about a thou and a, and a third, uh, but number three is is pretty bad. But again, we're gonna have to run it the way it is. So that's where we're at. Next thing I'm gonna do off camera is I'm just gonna run a ball hone through this after I clean it, you know, clean it, wipe it out at least. And then we can um, finish cleaning this uh, cylinder block and set it aside basically. But uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Um, you know, uh, if it was a different machine, different engine, uh, like a uh, old Z1 or something, a 900, you know, I would most definitely say, no, we're going to throw the money into it. But for this J motor on a police bike with an unknown bottom end as far as the transmission and stuff goes, we're just going to run it the way it is. All right, folks, that's it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned probably not the right way to do things, but this is the way we're going to do it. Um, I'm, again, disappointed with the um, cylinder to bore clearances, but it is what it is. Um, I... I'm pretty sure I mentioned in a video that because uh, I'm filming this outro after I did all the split up work and stuff between the two videos, make one video into two rather. I think I mentioned in the video that I'm going to correct the, the number three being way out. It's not correct, but it's better. By, I've already got it in stock by replacing the piston. Um, that piston is the brand new, new old stock piston. It's actually two thousandths bigger than the number three that came out of there, which brings it in line with the other three cylinders. So they're all out, but at least they're all out equally, and they're all out, you know, they're gonna be happy, you know, as far as that goes. I'm not necessarily happy with it, and I'm sure engine builders out there are throwing, you know, their uh, beer cans at the uh, at their TV or the computer right now, but it is the way it is based on condition of the bike and uh, the budget build status, all right? So there's some more stuff coming out on this channel, so you need to ring the bell, you need to subscribe. Um, you know, you like the video and share, it helps me out as well. Um, stage right to you, which you can't see, is the Z1R, which is back on the lift. I'm doing some custom work on a fat swing arm on that. That's gonna be coming out here pretty soon, including some machine work on the mill for that. And I also got some carb work coming out. So again, I hope you stick around. Thanks for watching, catch you on the next video. <laughs>